Praise the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us stand.
all the praise. Amen. 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 It's time we'll be reading the scripture from Psalm uh, 149. And you remember my glasses focus. Psalm 119, verses 57 through 64. Amen. Psalm 119, verses 57 through 64. Thou art my portion, O Lord. Mm -hmm. I have said that I will keep thy words. I entreated thy favor with my whole heart. Be merciful unto me according to thy word. Yeah. I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. Mm -hmm. The bands of the wicked have robbed me, but I have not forgotten thy law. At midnight, I will rise up to give thanks unto thee. Because of thy righteous judgment. Mm -hmm. I am a companion, I am a companion of all them that fear thee, and of them that keep thy precepts. The earth, O Lord, is full of thy mercy. Teach me thy statutes. Yeah. Amen. 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 We have a message to give us a prayer. One prayer. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. So glad to be here this morning. Amen. Amen. We just go ahead, and go ahead and look to the Lord in prayer Amen. as we just think about all the goodness he's done for us. Amen. It's just an opportunity for us to be able to just give him what he is due. Amen. So we're so Amen. thankful for this opportunity as we all look to the Lord in prayer. A wise Heavenly Father, we thank you just for life, health, and strength. We thank you for your continuous blessings and graces and mercies, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we understand fully that there is nothing that we can do to impress you, Lord Jesus. There's nothing that we can do to ever repay you for what you've done for us. We didn't deserve it, and we should not have done it, Lord Jesus. But yet and still, we're here today, just being able to say thank you. Thank you for all that you've done, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the things that you have done, the things that you are doing, and the things that you will do according to your will, Lord Jesus. Forgive us for all the things that we've done, Lord Jesus, any sins and transgressions and the shortcomings that we've had, Lord Jesus. We ask you for forgiveness for the things that we've done and the things that we said we weren't going to do anymore, Lord Jesus. Help us to just have a spirit, Lord Jesus, of deliverance. Help us have a, have a spirit of urgency, knowing that you've taken us too far to go back now, Lord Jesus. You say that like a dog returns to its vomit, a fool returns to its folly. So help us not to go back to the things that we've done, but always looking pressing and pressing forward, Lord Jesus, to what's ahead, Lord Jesus. Thank you for fellowship here this morning, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the opportunity just to come here together, Lord Jesus. You said, where two or three are gathered in my name, said, there I am in the midst. So thank you for allowing us one more opportunity just to be in the midst of your presence, Lord Jesus. Just to be one of those that we're able to wake up this morning and see the beauty of your guests, Lord Jesus. You said you've done wondrous things for us in our lives. So we thank you, we praise you, and magnify your name now and forevermore. And may God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
You can call on daddy, but can't nobody do you like Jesus. Amen. Amen. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's deliverance in the name of Jesus. There's forgiveness in the name of Jesus. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. And it is true that can't nobody do you like Jesus. Amen. Amen. We come, well, I come to bring you the announcements for today. For the second Sunday, September. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Millions didn't make it just this week. Just last night. Just this morning. People walked out of the door. Didn't know it was going to be their last time. But Lord, while we're here, while we're breathing, we, are, we have breath in our body. We're going to do what you command, and we're going to let everything that have breath praise you. Amen. Amen. We want to say thank you to everybody for tuning into our worship service, those who are in the sanctuary, those who are coming through the door, those who are watching us currently on Facebook, and those who will be watching us later on YouTube. We appreciate you, 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 and you. Connect with us on our social media community. We have YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram, but Facebook is our most used platform. Amen. We are broadcasting on channel 18 and 1304, local community programming at 97.5 Digital at 11 o'clock a.m. each Tuesday. If you need to contact the church, please email us at Cox Memorial, FWBC at gmail.com. I will get back to you between 24 to 48 hours. If you would like at any time for us to add you or include you or your family on our prayer list, comment on our service. You can inbox us. Just let us know because we all need prayer. We all need prayer. At any and every point in time in our life, we all need prayer. While you are surfing the net, be sure to view our website, which is coxmemorialfreewillbaptistchurch.org. We do not have our videos going on there. Instead, our videos can be viewed on Facebook or on YouTube. But our website, you can learn more about our ministry here. That's located at 1632 Riddle Road, Durham, North Carolina, 27713. We're on the corner of Riddle Road and Kirby Street. You can't miss us. We're right here. The Brick Church with a big parking lot. Amen. So you want to have yourself a good time. We know that we, we rock and we serve God good online. But we want to come and see you. And we wanted you to come see us in person. Amen. Amen. So one of them times while you're at home, come on out here and fellowship with us. At 10 o'clock, we have the door swinging wide open, waiting to accept you. There's a seat in here. They got your name on it. Amen. Amen. If you would like to sow a seat into our ministry, we have two ways of online giving. The first way is Cash App, and that's dollar sign Cox Memorial FWBC. And we also have Tithely, T I T H E dot L Y. There are directives on our website that can take you straight from Tidal and it tells you everything that you need to do. Or you can download download each app. Both of them are F-R-E-E. -E. Amen. <laughs> that concludes, well, no, it doesn't conclude the announcement. On Sunday, September the 22nd at 3 o'clock p.m., we will have our 13th annual A Day of Praise program. And we're asking you, if you don't have anything to do, come on out here. Our guest speaker will be uh, Apostle Mary Hill from Lamb of God Ministries. So come on out here. Let's all fellowship together. Because if we can't do it down here, I don't know how we think we're going to heaven to be able to fellowship together. Amen. Amen. They're not going to have no denomination here, no church there. We're all going to be one and be unified. So let's start doing it down here. Love is an action word. Let's stop talking about it and let's be about it. Amen. Amen. There are a lot of different things that uh, are coming up because we know in September, I think Dick Jonah said, is uh, Domestic Violence Awareness Month, right? And then we know, um, I think today is Grandparents Day, so All right. yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, this week. Okay. Okay, you think you don't say AARP celebrate Grandparents Month. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. 
Because when the parents fail at doing what they need to, we have grandparents that step in. Amen. So we do want to give the grandparents their uh, kudos and just say honor and thank you. Because we appreciate all grandparents for what you have done as well as aunts and uncles who step in for a child. Amen. Amen. So that concludes the announcements. Does anybody have a birthday or anniversary in, um, in the month of September? You. Okay, well, I guess speaker for today. <laughs> Minister Vincent. Vincent Floyd. When is your birthday? It was yesterday. Oh, look at God. Amen. His birthday was yesterday, September the 7th. All right. All right. See, I keep telling everybody that stars are born in September. <laughs> stars are born in September. So I'm going to say it up the airway so everybody knows that stars are born in September. Because yours truly will be celebrating her birthday tomorrow. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. So I'm thankful. Many people probably don't celebrate their birthday, but I tell them I celebrate from day one to day 30. We're going to do this a whole month. Amen. So it's our custom here to sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Birthday in September, happy, happy birthday or anniversary. Amen. One thing before I sit down, as we know, in November, major election is coming up. Not just for our president, but for governors and a lot of different officials that we need to make sure that we are getting the right people in place. Amen. Don't just take somebody's word, go do your own research and make sure you vote. A lot of people lost their lives. For the right to vote. For us to have the right to vote. Amen. So exercise your right. If you don't do it, you can't talk about which way it goes either way. So early voting begins in North Carolina on October the 17th through November the 2nd. And election day is on November the 5th. So we're asking that everybody go out and make sure you vote. Amen. All right, now we're going to have uh, the introduction of the speaker, and then we're going to have our next song, and we're going to get ready for the word. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. We are ready for a mighty word given us by Reverend Vincent Floyd, Amen. and we're praying that every and every one of you will listen attentively and let God speak to your heart. Amen. So, as I said in our old church, uh, it's a church that let the choir sing the sing to the praise of God and, and let everybody say amen. 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 And Reverend Vincent Floyd is ready to bring forth the message. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Thank Him. We lift His name every day. Amen. It is a blessing to be able to lift the name of God. Amen. God's people, don't y'all know that everybody, who, everyone here that woke up this morning, amen, every, each and every one of us have an opportunity just to thank God for what He's done. Amen. For if He woke you up this morning, amen, He started you on your right way. Amen. If you put your feet on solid ground, amen, allowed you just to see the blessings, amen, and the wondrous works that He creates every single day, amen, from the ants on the ground, amen, to the sun and the sky, amen. You ought to be thankful. You ought to give him praise for what he does, amen. God's people, don't y'all know that there is nothing that we can do to impress God, as I said earlier, amen. This is our opportunity. This is what we owe God, amen. For all the things we cannot pay him for, that's all right, because he asks us just to praise him and to give him the praise that is due to him, amen. Don't y'all know that we owe God, amen. Every single thing that you have, you owe him. Amen. But he's not asking for it all back. He knows that we cannot give it back. Amen. So take this opportunity that you have right now to just lift up the name of the Lord. Amen. We're so thankful to be here this morning. Amen. Amen. I want to firstly you know, give honor and praise to our, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Just again for the opportunity. Amen. Just to be here this morning. Amen. Amen. It's just it's a beautiful thing when we can just look to the Lord and just say thank you. Amen. I want to give special thanks to everyone here at um, at our Cox Memorial Free, uh, Free World Baptist Church. Amen. I want to give special thanks, amen, for those who have invited me here this morning. I've been starting with Elder Gwen. Thank you this morning for giving me the honor, amen, for allowing me to be here this morning. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. And we'll also thank uh, Deacon Joyner, um, Deacon Carver Joyner, amen, and Sister Mary, uh, uh, Sarah Joyner. Just always keeping up with me, amen. <laughs> I don't know if y'all know, but uh, we, we go way back, amen. <laughs> when I was when I was a little bit younger, amen, she and my aunt, who was now past, amen, they were the real good friends, amen. And But God doesn't let people, good people stay away too long, amen, because hadn't talked to her forever, amen. But suddenly I found out, you know, we had invited her to our church, and then I was like, you know, it's you again, amen. <laughs> so we're just thankful for the opportunity just to be able to just stay connected, amen, as God has intended, amen. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and open up in a, in a prayer, and then we'll go ahead and get into our word this morning. Amen. O oh, wise and heavenly Father, thank you again for life, health, and strength, Lord Jesus. Thank you for all that you do, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the, the graces and the blessings and the mercies once again, Lord Jesus. Thank you also for the unknown graces, Lord Jesus. If we knew all the things that you kept us from, Lord Jesus, what, how much more praise could we give you? Amen. So we thank you that you continue just to shield us and protect us, Lord Jesus. Not only that, but you guide us on our way, Lord Jesus. You plant and you firmly plant our feet on the ground, Lord Jesus. You allow us not to be moved. Lord Jesus, but you allow us to just be strong in your faith, knowing that your faith is unshakable, Lord Jesus. Thank you for making our weakness, yeah, your will perfect in our weakness, Lord Jesus, knowing that it is you who guides us, Lord Jesus, in everything, single thing we do, Lord Jesus. Bless everyone that's here. Bless those who are here virtually. Bless those who are away, Lord Jesus. Give us all the opportunity just to, whether we're here or far, be able to just praise the lifting name of the Lord, for his name is worthy to be praised. May God's people say, Amen. 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 Today's message this morning, amen, I was thinking about what to say, amen, and I'd already had this ready for a while, amen, but one thing that I wanted to you know, just kind of talk about this morning was just the importance, amen, of remembrance, amen, the importance of remembrance, amen. Now, I, I'm a history person. I like to understand the, the meaning of words, amen, because how can you give a word if you don't understand what it means, amen, amen, amen. so memories and re remembrance, amen. According to science and books that are out there, amen, say that memories are formed by connections, amen, through the brain, amen, and created through everyday activity, amen. It says that the more that one engages in activities, amen, the stronger the memory becomes, amen. It also says that the strongest connections that we have are to, are to those that are connected through emotion, amen. And in the true words that have been spoken then the great Maya Angelou who said that I've learned that people will forget what you said, amen? People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel, amen? Come on, somebody. How you feel, amen? The things you remember the most is how they impacted you deep within, amen? And lastly, memories create a bridge, amen, for further understanding, amen? Simply put, what you know now creates a bridge with what you're going to know later on. Amen. Right. I want to do a call and response here this morning to get everybody a little bit loose. Amen. If y'all don't mind, 
Got me a little bit fun with me this morning. Amen. Right. I'm going to say a verse. Amen. And when I say this verse, I want the congregation, everyone here say to say, I know this. Now, so do you. Amen. Y'all got it real easy. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and start. Amen. John 3.16 tells me that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And you all say, now, so do you. Amen. Keep on reading. It says that Nehemiah tells me not to grieve because the joy of the Lord is what? My strength. Amen. God's people say, I know this, and so do you. Jesus. Amen. Philippians 4, 7 tells me that the peace of God exceeds all understanding and will guard our hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. God, people say, I know this. Amen. Psalms 27, 14 says that wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he will strengthen your heart. Amen. God's people say, I know this, and so do you. Amen. Proverbs eleven seventeen says, tells that a kind man helps himself. Amen. But a cruel man hurts himself. Amen. God's people say, I know this, and so do you. Amen. Galatians 6, 9, 10 says, if I don't get tired of doing good, amen, then I will reap in due season. I just can't give up. Amen. God's people say it. I know this, and so do you. And finally, 1 Corinthians 10, 13 tells me that I must have self-control because temptation is everywhere. But God is faithful, and he always, and I want to say always, gives me a way out. God's people say I know this, not so do you. All Amen. Right. I want everybody to get an understanding. I also want you to remember this because that's going to be important a little bit later on. Amen. This responsive reading comes from scriptures based on the fruits of the spirit. Amen. Right. Which are what? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Amen. Right. Now, why is this important to God's people? Amen. These are the tenets, amen, the precepts set forth by the Father as a non-negotiable way of living our lives. You all know what non-negotiable means, right? It means that you have no other option but to do it this way he told you to do it. Amen. Amen. In other words, we need to not only know this, but we need to remember this. Amen. And we remember these fruits by living these fruits. Amen. You are what you remember. Amen. So if you put these things into practice. Amen. You are living in these fruits. Amen. Let's go ahead into the word of God here this morning. The message of God is going to be coming from 2 Peter. Amen. Chapter 1. Verses 3 through 15. If you'd like to read along you can. Otherwise you can just read or hear along with me. Amen. I'll read that. I'll give that to you all one more time. That's going to be coming from 2 Peter. Chapter 1. Verses 3 through 15. Amen. All right. And I'll go ahead and read. Amen. Mm -hmm. Second Peter 1, 3, 15 reads, and this is coming from the NIV version. Amen. It says, by his divine power, the Lord has given us everything we need for life yeah. and godliness through the knowledge of the one who called us by his own honor and glory. Thank you, Jesus. It says, through his honor and glory, he has given us precious and wonderful promises yeah. that you may share the divine nature and escape from the world's immorality that sinful craving produces. Verse 5 says, This is why you must make every effort to add moral excellence to your life, to your faith, and to moral excellence, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, endurance, and to endurance, godliness, and to godliness, affection for others, and to affection for others, love. Verse 8 says, if all these are yours and they're growing in you, they'll keep you from becoming inactive and infruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9 says, whoever lacks these things are short-sighted and blind. Amen. Forgetting that they were cleansed from their past sins. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 10 says, therefore, brothers and sisters, be eager to confirm your call and election. Amen. It says, do this. And you will never be lost. I want to read that one more time. Say, so you do these things and you will never be lost. Yeah. Amen. Keep on reading here. And it says that, therefore, um, in this way, you will receive a rich welcome into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. 12 says, so I'll keep reminding you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Keep reminding you about these things. Amen. Amen. Uh, let me, oh, lost my spot here. Give me a second. Okay. Although you already know them and stand secure in the truth that you have. I'll keep reminding, even if you already know, 
I'm still going to remind you, amen? It says, I think it's right that I keep stirring up your memory as long as I'm alive. 14 says, after all, our Lord Jesus Christ has shown me that I'm about to depart from this life. I'm eager for you to remember all these things after my death. Amen. Guys, people, one more time. Can we say, I know this, now so do you. I know this, now so do you. Amen. Amen. This word serves as a, comes from the book of Peter. Amen. From, yeah, multiple names, right? St. Peter, Simon Peter, amen, among other names. An apostle of Jesus, amen. And also a slave, amen. So he, he wore many hats, amen. Right, right. The thing about Peter is that he was faithful to God, amen. Right. Being one of the first apostles to acknowledge Jesus as the Savior of our world, amen. One of the first. So this book was written to the living church members, amen, that had been exiled and scattered across the five Roman section of modern day Turkey, amen. So those who had no home, amen, they were just strong about the world, amen. They needed a reminder of who they were and what they needed to do, amen. 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 It says Simon was made aware of his short time on earth by Jesus. Amen. So he used this letter as one of his final addresses to his members. Amen. He felt that it was important in these last days to give the people what they needed to know before he left. Amen. Right. Primary message today is a call to urgency. Amen. Amen. But the urgency isn't to add more to what the members knew. Amen. But, be to, but to be reminded of what they already know. Amen. How many of us here know that it's not, not just about what you know. It's about what you remember, amen? Amen. What you know is no good if you don't put it into practice, if you don't remember it, amen? It just goes into the ether and it dissolves like, like gas, amen, or like steam in the air, amen? It's not just about what you know, amen? It's about what you remember, amen? Amen. I want to just encourage God people here today that look, whether you are new to your walk, amen, whether you're just starting to hit your stride, amen, or whether you're truly just in a place where you are truly running your marathon, amen, there are three things I want to tell everybody here this morning, amen, and why remembrance is so important to our lives, amen. The first thing, amen, first thing I want everybody to know here is that remembrance is a difference between being a hearer of the word and a doer of the word, amen. How many of us here want not just want to be hearers, but how many of us here want to be doers of his word, amen. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but I want to be a doer. I want to put it, what I know into practice. Amen. It says that memory that is put into practice eventually becomes second nature. Amen. The more you do something, the less you got to remember how to do it. Amen. How many of us here go to work every single morning? Amen. How many of us here need a GPS to, to get to work? Okay. All right. All right. Well, that's an exception there. Amen. <laughs> The majority of us here, amen, most of us know how to get to work. Why? Because we do it every single day, amen. We don't even have to think about it. Even when there's a detour, right, we even know how to make it that way, amen, because we have done it so many times that we figured it out, and there's nothing really to remember, amen. So the more you remember it, the better you can apply God's word, amen. And that's, and that's the point of it all, amen. The more you remember it, amen, I'm going to tell you this, if you don't have God's word in your life, then it doesn't matter, amen, but if you are a doer of God's word, you want to be able to apply it yeah. to your life, amen. amen. But there's a, there's a flip side to that, amen. The things that you don't remember and the things that you don't apply don't matter that much in life. You don't really remember it, amen. Think about that movie that wasn't all that great, amen. Yeah. Didn't like it, amen. You probably don't remember it, amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. You know, there are things in life that are, if they're insignificant, amen, then they less they have less likelihood to be able to hold space in our heads, amen. So it says that if it doesn't mean much, if it doesn't matter much, or it doesn't make much difference, we're less likely to remember it, amen. But I'm here to tell everybody that James 122 reminds us that in order to be blessed in all that we do, we must not only be hearers of the word, amen, but doers of the word, amen. What does James say? He said being a hearer and not a doer is like what? Walking into a mirror, amen. Looking at yourself and then moving away and then forgetting what you saw, amen. 
Come on now, somebody. It's like saying, who am I? Amen. Because you have not put it into practice. Amen. But here's the thing. I'm here to tell God's people that you have an opportunity to put what you know into practice. Amen. That's all right if you don't remember it. If you're not practicing it now, here is your opportunity to do it now. Amen. You can always, just as we're always being hearers, we can always be doers. Amen. And putting those things into practice. Amen. God's people say it one more time. I know this. Now, so do you. I know. Amen. Amen. Here's the second thought I want everybody to get here. Amen. Remembrance keeps us anchored to who we are and also to who we are not. Amen. If you know who you are, then you know who you are not. Amen. See, look, y'all, we serve a God that lets us know that it is either this way or that way. Amen. It cannot be two ways. Amen. The book tells us over and over. It says that we cannot serve two masters. Right. Because when we serve two masters, it tells us then what? A double-minded man is unstable in what? All his ways. Amen. Amen. So if you are going to a place and you are serving two people, you're really only serving one. Amen. Amen. Guys, people, we live in a world that is designed to be contrasting. Amen. Amen. We live in a place that is a culture of comparison. Amen. You like you look like this and you look like that. Amen. Amen. It creates divisions. Amen. In our life. Amen. Life is so much of the this or that. Amen. Amen. We don't leave ourselves much gray areas, good or bad, so it causes us and it compels us to be decisive in our choices and our actions. Amen? Amen. But the thing is that no matter how sure we are of ourselves or the decision that we make, the world can't even guarantee that what we do for the world will give us good results. Amen? Right. Amen. Look, as much as you think you're doing here in this world, amen, there's no guarantee, amen, that the world's going to appreciate what you do. Amen. Amen. I'm here to tell God's people that we serve a God that can not only guarantee that, but he's also promised it to us. We just have to be able to walk in the things that he has for us. Amen. 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 We don't have to guess if he, if those things that we want from God are going to be there because he already told us that they're there for us. Amen. Amen. So all we have to do is just walk in that path. Amen. Stay on that path. If we get off that path, get back on that path. Amen. Amen. Look, the straight and narrow path is straight and narrow for a reason. Amen. Amen. If it were wide and broad, then it, what does the word say? Everybody would be on it. Amen. Yeah, yeah. But the word, that, that, that path that is straight and narrow means that you have to have discipline to stay on it. Amen. Amen. That's why the word tells us that it reminds us of what we are and what we are not. We are not the world. Amen. Amen. We are God's children. Amen. Amen. God's children walks on the straight and narrow path. Amen. Amen. The world walks on the wide way. Amen. Amen. The world of popularity. Amen. And vanity and self-gratitude. Amen. Those things that go one here one day and go on the next. Amen. I'm here to remind God's people that the things that matter are not of the world. Amen. But of what God has asked you and called you to do. Amen. God will Reminds you of who you are, amen, and who you are not, amen. amen. The word he uh, continues, it tells us that sometimes the enemy will try to convince us that the world is somehow better than what God gives us, amen. amen. And you know what he does? He takes the things that we like, amen. Right. You know what your weaknesses are. I don't, you don't have to tell me, amen. Right. I know what mine are, amen. Right. I know the things I like, amen. And the devil never, he never makes you do it, but he dangles it in your face, amen. He said, remember that time? Remember that time that was fun, amen? Remember right. what we had? You used to have good times with this thing, right, amen? He inclines to the things that you like, amen. amen. Look, I'm here to tell y'all, amen, that I'd rather get a little bit of what God has and a lot of the world, what the amen. world offers, amen. I just need a little bit of God in my life so I can be able to keep running this race, amen. Uh -huh. amen. The word tells us that I'd rather be a doorkeeper, amen, amen. in the house of the God than dwell in what? The tents of the wickedness, amen. I don't want a whole lot of wickedness. I just want a little bit of God, amen, because that little bit will be far more than what the world could ever give me, amen. So I'm looking for that little bit that he gives me, amen. The thing is that I give a little bit of God when I should be giving him so much more than what I give him, amen. But I have an opportunity, and we all have an opportunity, amen, to be able to give him what he asked for, give him what we know that he are, he's owed, amen. So I want to remind everybody here to remember who you are so you remember who you are not, amen. 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 Guys, people, one more time, we say, I know this, now so do you. I know this, so do you. Thank you, Jesus, amen. Uh -huh. Last, I did want everybody here to get, amen. We talked about what it means and how it's important to know what it is that God wants us to know, amen. But now let's talk about what he actually wants you to know, amen. Uh -huh.
I leave you with five important keys, amen, to remembering according to the word of God, amen. Uh -huh. The first one, amen, remember all the commandments of the Lord, amen. Uh -huh. That comes from uh, Numbers 15, 9, 39 and 40. In order to stay on the path of righteousness, we must always remember that we've been called to do exactly what we've been instructed to do. Amen. amen. I know sometimes it's hard. Amen. Even the word says that discipline is hard in the beginning. Amen. Right, but right. as you become more disciplined, it becomes easier. Amen. amen. The word isn't hard. It's our ability to follow the word that is hard. Amen. Because right. we're still being pulled in different directions. Amen. We still like that taste of things that are out in the world. Amen. So we have to stop telling ourselves that the word is hard. The word isn't hard. Amen. It's the discipline and our faithfulness. Amen that need to get in order so we can be able to follow what God tells us to do. Amen. amen. Second key, amen, is to remember the whole way that the Lord God has led you. Amen. amen. Remember where he's led you. Amen. amen. It's the journey, y'all, that strengthens us in our humility. Amen. amen. Humility comes from that journey, from going through things. Amen. Look, the world will tell you, the world will build you up to the sky. Amen. And it tear you down in the next. Amen. amen. And if you're on the ground looking like, what just happened? Amen. And you think about all those people that you saw on your way up. Amen. Those are the same people that you what? See coming down. Amen. amen. So humility it's not the thought of thinking of less of yourself, but it means thinking of yourself less, amen? Right. Putting others, amen, before you, amen? Bringing people into the fold, amen? If you know somebody has something that you might be able to provide, amen, you have a duty to help them, amen? Now, don't overextend yourself, amen? God didn't say do that, amen? But what he said was that help your fellow neighbor, amen, that is in need, amen? How would you feel if you saw somebody that knows that you need to know needs a right to work, and you can, it's on your way to work, amen? And you can help them out, amen? Do the things, the small things, amen, that God has asked you to do. That is what true humility is, amen? Third key, amen, is to remember to repent when you fall, in, amen? I don't know about y'all, but I, be, I used to beat myself up a lot. Amen. When I used to fall. Amen. Because you feel like, well, I did all this work and I've made all this progress. Amen. And then in one moment, amen, you feel like that all gets erased. Amen. But I'm here to ask, who said that all that progress got erased? God didn't say that it got erased, amen. We told ourselves, amen, that that, that progress was erased, amen. Uh -huh. We have still made it so far from where we are, amen. Right. It's not like Uno, um, excuse me, Monopoly, where if you hit that uh, the jail card, amen, you got to go all the way back to, right. to the beginning, amen. God's word and his progress doesn't work that way, amen. We are still able to keep the progress that we've made, amen. Yeah. Understanding that we will fall and come short of the glory of God. It says it in the word. It says that we are shaped in iniquity, amen. That means we were born here messing up, amen. But I'm here to remind God's people, amen, as our message here tells us, amen, not to beat yourself up, amen, when you stumble and fall, amen. Get back up, amen. Keep doing what you have been doing, amen. It feels like you've made a step back, amen, but you just fell, amen. It, you can just fall right where you are. That don't mean you fell back, amen. It just means you fell. Get up and keep on going, amen. We have to have an urgency, a spirit of urgency to repent when we've done these things, amen. That's how we stay covered, amen. We can't wallow in the things that we've done, amen. And say, oh, Lord, the Lord forget, it doesn't forgive me, amen. He says that when, that when you ask forgiveness, he throws it into what? A sea of forgetfulness. He doesn't remember it. Why do we remind ourselves of the things that we do, amen, when he said that he doesn't remember it, amen? We hold ourselves to a higher standard that isn't even necessary, amen? He said, I remember your sins no more. So continue just to repent. Have that urgency to repent when you fall, amen? Yeah, you. Key four, amen? It says, remember the creator while you're young, Amen? I think the word says to remember the creator in your youth, amen, so that when you get older, it says, you, and, and, you, and you're tempted with things, you said, I have no use for these sins, amen. Right. How many God's people know that it's easier to establish a, a godly connection when you're young, amen? It's so much easier to do it when you're young, amen? Why do we tell our children, train, up a child, train a child up in a way that they should go so when they get older, 
They will not depart from it, amen? We tell ourselves that because we know that it's harder to do it when we're older than when we're younger, amen? We're in our spiritual prime when we're younger, amen? I don't know about y'all, but when I get older, I want to be able to rest in the Lord, amen? I want to be able to take what I've already known, amen, and be able to allow God to allow me to coast, amen, always learning, always growing, amen? But I don't want to be starting from square one at 81, amen? I want to be able to take what I've known, amen, and refine it and mature it, so that when I get older, it's not so much harder, amen? Then I can do what? I can take what I've known and give it to others, amen? Because now what? I tell people, I say, I know this, now so do you, amen? I give this to you because I know this, amen? Now you know it, amen? Thank you, Jesus, amen? God's people should always be encouraged that it is never too early to draw near to God, amen? It's never too early, amen? He never said that you must wait until you're 10 or 15 or 20. He said do it right now, amen. And those that don't know how to do it, those who do know the way, encourage those so they can be able to get a little bit of it of their understanding, amen, and build and get on that path, amen. And the last key I want to give everybody here, amen, it says to remember the good that God has done in your life. And I think that this is such a key, amen, because again, sometimes on that journey, y'all, it feels like we just aren't making any progress, amen? It's taking too long, amen? And we see people in our lives that are getting the things that we want, amen? amen. They're getting fast, amen? They got that nice car, or they got that good job, or they got more money, or amen? Or they took Ozempic, and now they weigh they, they, they're 60 pounds lighter, amen? All these things, we compare ourselves to others, amen? I'm here to encourage everybody here, amen? And also to remind you that the enemy has a way of trying to trick us into believing that the goodness of God isn't really all that good, amen. He tries to tell you that it's not all that great, amen. I can give you what you want right now, amen. We tell ourselves and we fool ourselves into thinking that the things that come quick are the things that are good, amen. I'm telling you now, the things that come quickly also go quickly, amen. They go just as quickly as they come, amen. And then when it's gone, you're trying to figure out what just happened, amen. And you leave worse off than how you came, amen. Look, but the God, but the God gives us those things that are enduring, amen. He tells us, he says, look, God doesn't count time the way we do. Why? Because he's trying, waiting for us to get to a place where we need to be so that we can be as ready for those things as they are for us. Amen. That old is trick in the book, amen. It's, it's old trick in the book uh, from the devil, amen. But we have the opportunity and the ability to resist it, amen. amen. Guys, people, I want to leave you all with this. If we stay focused solely on our far, on our, on our on how far we have to go, excuse me, then we will inevitably be, get, get tired on the journey, amen. amen. But if we think of all the good that God has given us on this journey, and we stand to gain, amen. So we think of what he's done for us so far, and the things that he's doing now, and the things that he will be doing, amen. Then that is how in Isaiah, amen, we're able to wait on the Lord, amen, and do so effectively. That's how we will renew our strength, amen. And that's how we'll be able to fly up on wings, amen. And that's what lets us run and not be weary, and that's what lets us walk and not faint, amen. We're so thankful for the word. And if you need a reminder, just remember what we talked about early. Amen. When it tells us, it says, I know this. Now, so do you. Amen. amen. I want to encourage everybody here this morning. Amen. Just to be, just remind yourself of what you already know. Take what you know. Amen. Uh -huh. Build on that. Amen. A good foundation is a solid foundation. Amen. I mean, you got to know how to build it first before you build anything on top of that. If you don't have a foundation, then what does it matter? Amen. Nobody here. Amen. If you are, if you are basic in the beginning of knowledge, amen, you have to build yourself up. Amen. And even those who are advanced, amen, and those who have been in the, in the word for decades, amen, and half century and almost a century, amen, even those people are still learning, amen. They learn based on what they know, amen. And they know this because they remember the word. Amen. They constantly remind themselves of the word. Amen. And what it says and what it means for us in our lives. Amen. Yeah. So that's why I encourage God's people here today. Amen. To always remind yourselves. Yeah. I know this. Now so do you. Amen. Amen. And that is our word here for this morning. Amen. I just want to give everybody a little bit of encouragement. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I just ask that God add an abundance to his word, amen, and through that abundance, amen, we are blessed as well, amen, because we, the word, our blessings come from the word, amen, and being do hearers and doers of the word, amen. Amen. Thank amen. you, Jesus. Amen. 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 amen.
doors of the church are now open. I'm sorry. Um, okay. Amen. Doors of the church are now open. If there's anybody, amen, that would like prayer, amen, then now is your opportunity, amen. We do this not to call anybody out, amen, or to make anybody feel singled out, amen, but for you to just get the opportunity, amen. I mean, this is your opportunity, amen. If you miss out, then that's, you know, I, I can't, we can't make you do anything, amen. Amen. The point of free will is that it's what? It's free, amen. amen. You do it because you want to, amen. Or you do it because you feel like you have to, amen. Whatever compels you to come to God, amen. amen. Do so, and do so in a way that allows you to be able to make that decision on your own, amen, as it's given by God, amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Feel that Jesus be waiting.
bless it. Amen. The importance of remembrance. Amen. Reverend Vincent Floyd. Amen. Yeah, beautiful message. This time we're going to get ready to have our offering. Amen. 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 We got all the praise. Amen.